easily one of the most anticipated films of 2024. It also became the year's box office champion after just about 10 days in theaters as well. Let's talk about Inside Out 2. Hey guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews It. Welcome to my spoiler-free review for the brand new film Inside Out 2. This is a juggernaut in theaters. It had the biggest opening since Barbie uh, last summer and uh, is one of the biggest animated film openings of all time time. A lot of people going to see this uh, and really a, a return to form for Pixar because uh, most of their recent output has premiered directly on Disney+. Plus. We didn't even get the chance to see that originally in theaters, uh, a few of the films anyway. So this uh, marks a big, big return for uh, both Pixar and really Disney too. They have not had a great run at the box office lately either. So uh, big stuff there, but uh, is it any good? Let's talk about that here in just a second. First, let me welcome you into Damn Reviews It. Thank you for finding this video. We do movie and TV reviews here on the channel, and just about every day I post something new, so there's always a lot to check out. With that in mind, please consider subscribing. Hit that like button, comment below, all that stuff, of course helps the channel out. A lot of people have uh, seen this movie already. Did you watch it? What did you think? Let me know in the comments uh, your thoughts of Inside Out 2. So, uh, of course, the original is uh, one of for me, the the crown jewels of Pixar. Uh, it is an A+. I watched it again for at least the third time uh, the other day just to kind of remind myself, prepare myself for this movie, and it's still an A+. It's uh, just a brilliant, brilliant film. So can this one live up to it? Uh, I think expectations were pretty high, but it's a tough bar to cross, right? Especially uh, most of the recent Pixar output I have given more in the B, B plus kind of range. Um, but uh, this reunites a lot of the stars from the original cast, including Amy Poehler as Joy, Phyllis Smith as Sadness. You've got Louis Black. Uh, and then Diane Lane and Kyle MacLachlan reprise their roles as Riley's parents as well. But we have some newcomers as well, uh, not only with new emotions added onto the cast, which we'll get into uh, a little bit of the plot here in a second, but uh, a few replacements as well. Mindy Kaling uh, is not here in this iteration, and uh, Bill Hader as well is out. Uh, and to replace that, we've got Li Liza uh, Lapira and Tony Hale. Now, from what I read, uh, it was really uh, for, uh, you know, money disputes, contractual disputes. Um, you know, the, the one article I read had Amy Poehler uh, receiving as much as $5 million for her role as Joy, and they were being offered something like $100,000 or something. I mean, it's uh, you know, look, obviously Joy is, is one of the big draws to this movie, but these are, you know, pretty high-profile uh, uh, performers, so I, I'm shocked that they didn't want to offer them uh, at least a little bit extra or, or maybe a cut of the profits or whatever, but whatever the case is, they said, nah, I'm good. Tony Hale, of course, uh, was in Pixar's Toy Story 4 as Forky, so he has some experience uh, with the studio. Uh, Liza Lapira, I don't think she has been in anything. Uh, with Pixar anyway, but uh, you also have, uh, as some of the new emotions, Maya Hawk and Io Edibiri, uh, who of course is very popular on The Bear, season three about to drop for that, um, but uh, the basic premise here is we've got Riley, uh, who in the first movie was 11, um, and now she has hit puberty. She is 13 now, and so she is getting a whole bunch of new emotions. So there's really sort of two stories going on, because you have the uh, inside of her head story, which I think takes front and center, but we do experience a lot of Riley's uh, sort of own life in this as well. But uh, So the inner story is that there's all these new emotions uh, leaving little room for some of the old familiar ones, including joy and sadness. Um, so these new ones such as anxiety and ennui and embarrassment and envy, things that uh, I think we all experience, not just, you know, starting in puberty. I think we certainly experience some of those as a younger child as well. But for this particular person, for Riley, they appear uh, in puberty. So they sort of uh, take over the headquarters and uh, Joy and gang get sort of pushed out to uh, one of the worlds that we saw in the original movie, and they have to find their way back to headquarters, a little bit like what we saw in the first movie, right? That was sort of one of the main plot conceits. But then uh, we have Riley's life, which is, uh, you know, she loves hockey. We, we learned about this before, and now she is uh, going to this hockey camp 
uh, with a couple of her best friends, and she learns on the way to this camp that uh, her two best friends in the world are going to be going to a different high school than her next year. So that creates a whole mess of these new emotions to sort of kick into gear. Um, and then she meets one of her idols uh, who, you know, is, is on the high school hockey team um, who is voiced by, let me see here. Well, Kensington uh, Talman is Riley. Uh, I didn't mention her yet. She, she I think, reprises her role. I believe it was her uh, before, but honestly, maybe not. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, we have Yvette Nicole Brown as the coach, Coach Roberts, and um, do we have this girl? I'm sure we do somewhere. Anyway, um, here you go. Lilimar. Don't know who that is. As uh, Val, who is, um, you know, going to be attending the, the high school um, that Riley will now be going to, minus her new friend. So she has to sort of make this decision. Okay, well, do I want to kind of form this friendship with this new gal who, who I really am sort of, uh, you know, enamored of? Or you know, have one last hurrah with my old friend. So that's sort of what's going on with Riley. So, all right, well, that's, that's enough of the plot. Let's, let's talk about the movie itself. So look, like I mentioned, I think the first Inside Out is honestly one of Pixar's best movies. I think it is a masterpiece. Uh, it really, really uh, gets emotions right. The world building is exquisite. And we continue that a little bit here as well, because of course, in the first one, we were introduced to things like core memories. And here we're introduced to things like self. Riley's, uh, you know, got all these different strings, like sort of violin strings or whatever, um, that can be plucked and we can sort of, um, hear her inner thoughts and stuff and they are forming her self. So we have that new concept, uh, to, to learn about. Um, so there is some extra world building here, but we are definitely, um, you know, reminiscing about some of the other things like the different islands that we uh, enjoyed in the first one and, um, you know, all the different core memories and all the, the memory balls and all that kind of stuff. That's all back. But yes, we are definitely exploring new worlds as well. Um, there's the, the, the uh, I don't know if they call it, what, what they call it, the Chamber of Secrets or whatever. That's Harry Potter, obviously, but you know it's it's this uh, place where they they stick uh, you know all of all of Riley's deepest darkest secrets are in here, and uh, maybe her repressed memories and stuff like that. Um, and there's a really fun one uh, played by Ron Funches, who is like this like a Dora the Explorer or Blues Clues type star of uh, this show that uh, Riley really liked growing up and hasn't thought about for a while. Um, so th there's a fun recurring gag uh, with that throughout the movie, but. Um, look, overall, this is a lesser movie than the first one. I think it would have been hard to live up to that first one. But what we really experience here in this one, much like the first one, is how the emotions are explored. Um, because we we had a little bit of overlap in that first one. Like, I, I always thought sadness was sort of also aligned with fear. Like, when, when they get to, um, you know, that other world sadness, you know, was definitely afraid of things too, not just, you know, bummed out about them. So I thought, okay, maybe there's some overlap there. But here we see a lot more overlap with the emotions, specifically with joy. Um, and that is, you know, a great, great message that, yeah, we don't always have to be um, you know, one thing, even with our, even within ourselves, you know, there's maybe this turmoil and, and inner strife and all of that. And look, let's be real. The ideas of anxiety and embarrassment and envy and these, these emotions, um, are very, very strong with a lot of people right now, you know, forget just, uh, teenagers or, or, uh, kids or what have you, um, you know, especially after COVID, I think a lot more people have experienced uh, a lot of emotions that maybe they either didn't know they had or whatever. Um, and this movie and, and the first one, um, really, really explore those ideas deeply and very, very sharply. Um, and this is something that, that Pixar has excelled at for years and years, and I do think that they've sort of uh, fallen off with their last few movies. Um, still, the only negative grade I've ever given a Pixar movie is Cars 2. Um, but, you know, all of them are at least positive, but a lot more in the B range lately than these uh, these A movies that we were used to for the first maybe 10 years of Pixar's existence, like the Toy Stories and Finding Nemo and all of that. Um, but that first one is, I think, the last truly great Pixar movie, but this one is probably the best one since Soul. Um, you have a lot of really great animation. Um, I don't know if it's as funny as the first one, and I also don't think there is anything to rival the emotional heft 
of Bing Bong in the first one. Um, but, I mean, there are very few movies, animated or otherwise, that have that emotional impact of Bing Bong from the first movie. Um, if you've seen it, you definitely know what I'm talking about. So there's nothing quite here to match that. But um, there's a scene where uh, Riley's anxiety is really, really getting the better of her. And, um, you know, the animation there with just within her facial changes, it's just really, really well done. Um, and, and hearkening back to, I think, the things that Pixar really excelled at uh, in their first 10 or 15 years of making films that maybe have been missing a little bit lately. Um, so this is definitely worth a watch for sure. Um, it's the best animated movie I've seen in quite some time. And like I said, uh, the best Pixar movie, I would say, since Soul. And that was, at this point, almost four years ago. Uh, I leave Inside Out 2 with an A+. Minus. Definitely a lot of good stuff there, a lot of return to form, um, and Amy Poehler just absolutely fantastic once again as Joy. So you can check that out in theaters now. Uh, it'll probably be playing there a while since it's uh, doing so well. But all right, thank you for watching Dave Reviews. I'll see you next time. Bye.